Renessa. The breathing, the panting, the moaning, the screaming. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? So my question for NASA is, how are you ensuring the safety of our astronauts in a vacuum? I want to make sure our astronauts have the proper training to survive the deadly vacuum of space. Proper training means you train in an environment that most closely resembles the harsh environment you'll be exposed to. Now there are two issues that I have with NASA's training practices. Number one involves the fact that NASA trains astronauts in a swimming pool when in actuality they are supposedly going to be working in the exact opposite environment of outer space. And my second issue with NASA is its ability to even create a vacuum here on Earth that is sufficiently similar to the alleged vacuum of outer space. So before we begin, let's see how NASA creates a vacuum here on Earth. Spaceball One has now become... Mega Main. Good! Look! Now, commence operation... Vacuum Suck! So this here is the Great Space Power Facility at NASA's Plum Brook Station in Sandusky, Ohio, which they built with our money. This is the world's largest and most powerful and expensive vacuum. Some of the test programs that have been performed at the facility include high-energy experiments, full-scale rocket fairing separation tests, Mars lander system tests, deployable solar sail tests, and International Space Station hardware tests. I mean, construction costs were astronomical. So is the upkeep and maintenance. And obviously there's no astronaut training going on in there. And a little later I will show you exactly what they do with it. They use it for propaganda videos and drop a feather and a bowling ball. Ugh. Anyways. So first off, this chamber makes a high vacuum. That's all it can do. And this high vacuum is three levels before the vacuum of outer space. So it's not even as powerful as the vacuum of space in which they will be working. And um, for those of you who don't think a vacuum is powerful, and that the pressure difference between a vacuum and the atmosphere in which we live is not powerful, check out what a vacuum can lift, and then think about what it would do to a puny tin can in space, or a wimpy spacesuit, especially over time or if there's any minuscule imperfection or leak. So check this out. We're loading 42 inch 480 wall steel pipe, three to a truck, pipe are about 40 feet in length and they weigh about 9,000 pounds. We're loading them with a, um, an AccuVac vacuum attachment on a 450 John Deere hose. Pipe weigh about, I think I said the pipe weigh about 9,000 pounds a piece. This vacuum attachment will pick, I, this one I think will pick 30,000 pounds. That's 15 tons just on a vacuum. Now that's power. 
And it is funny how the vacuum chamber, like a submarine, has massively thick walls to withstand the difference in pressure. This is because, in the case of a submarine, the submarine must survive the difference in pressure that exists between the ocean, deep in the ocean, and the ground level atmosphere inside the submarine. Without very thick and structurally sound walls, the pressure difference would crush the sub. Likewise, the ISS and the spacewalking astronauts must survive the opposite but equally harsh difference in pressure that exists between the vacuum of space and the normal atmosphere inside their suit or inside the space station. So again, it's funny that they need extremely thick and structurally solid walls for a submarine and a vacuum chamber, but for some reason, in the more powerful vacuum of outer space, you can survive in a flimsy spacesuit or the tin can known as the ISS. Eh, sounds legit. To illustrate this even further, on the vacuum scale, this monstrosity of NASA, our great space power facility, is only a high vacuum. You can see from the chart that outer space is three levels of vacuum beyond NASA's most powerful vacuum, which they don't even train in anyways. And all of NASA's other vacuum chambers are only medium vacuums. So right there, that's a fail. They can't even recreate the vacuum of outer space. And they don't train in a vacuum. There's almost no footage at all of any astronauts even in a vacuum chamber. And plus, they even tell you it's their policy to only train underwater. They don't train in a vacuum chamber. This is a complete fail. I'll come back to this point in a minute, but before that, I want to discuss the major problems I have with NASA's policy of training astronauts in a gigantic swimming pool. And really, the only alleged benefit of training underwater in a pool, they say, is that it simulates zero gravity. Well, actually, it doesn't even simulate zero G. It only simulates zero G on camera, in a video, making videos, but not in practice. To summarize why training underwater is a complete fail, I made a list of eight problems with training underwater as opposed to training with something like a zero-g wire system in a warehouse. So here we go. Number one, pressure underwater is the complete opposite of the vacuum of space. Underwater, the pressure is extremely high and will compress, it'll crush you with extreme force. In a vacuum, pressure is extremely low, there's no pressure, and you will expand, explode, your spacecraft will explode with the extreme force and it will do so outward, the opposite direction of underwater. So why in the world would you train under conditions that are opposite those in which you will be working? This makes no sense at all. Total fail. Number two, resistance in movement. Underwater, moving around and pushing off of things will be much slower and tedious as opposed to the vacuum of space. At least if training is done in a warehouse on wires, there will be less resistance, which is at least closer to the complete lack of resistance in space. Water is the exact opposite of a vacuum. There's a great deal of resistance when you move around underwater. Number three, it makes no sense to construct a full-scale model of the ISS underwater. An ISS replica could easily be constructed in a large warehouse or a hangar. It would be much easier to build, maintain, modify, etc. This is just silly to do it underwater. Number four, teams of safety divers and camera crews must also risk their lives underwater for astronaut training. With the unnecessary burdens of tanks, gear, tools, parts, cameras, production equipment, etc., instructors could be more helpful in a normal environment with astronauts on wires in a warehouse. It would also be easier for the camera crews to, <laughs> to fake it. Uh, number five, it costs millions to maintain the gigantic swimming pool. The underwater ISS model, the crews, equipment, it would be a fraction of the cost to use a warehouse with wires and a normal ISS replica. Common sense. Uh, number six, the performance and integrity of a spacesuit underwater is going to be the opposite of how it would perform and hold up in a vacuum. 
Training on wires at normal atmospheric pressure would at least be closer to movement in a vacuum than underwater and how a spacesuit would react. A real vacuum chamber testing would be the best, but again, training underwater makes no sense. Number seven, weight distribution, inertia, movement, and reactions would be completely different underwater. Training to move and work with zero-g wire systems in a normal atmosphere would be closer to the alleged vacuum of space. Number eight, spacesuits, gear, tools, equipment, spare parts, etc. are all designed for use in space, in a vacuum, not underwater. Tools such as drills, wrenches, hammers, bolts, quick releases, they would all behave completely differently underwater. This makes no sense to train to use these underwater. Ah, I'm astonished by how difficult it is to actually move around. The idea, like from the movie Gravity, that you could like reach out and grab something with one of these gloves? No way, not, not gonna happen. So, there are no benefits to training underwater in my opinion. But there are many disadvantages and outright dangerous issues if you train underwater. The better option would be to train on the ground in a warehouse with wires just like they do in the movies. They can simulate zero-g just fine with puppeteers and wire systems. They can do this in a normal atmosphere with less resistance than underwater. So at least it's a little closer to moving around in space and operating and fixing things in space. If it was reality, so. Anyways, I mean, we know why they train in a pool. It's for the simple reason that on camera, Floating around in a pool has the appearance of floating in space. That's it. Otherwise, it makes no sense whatsoever to train underwater. In fact, it's just silly and foolish. But we don't use our brains and ask questions about what they do with our hard-earned money. We just see it on the news and we believe it. Now, here is one of the few instances of an astronaut supposedly in a vacuum chamber. This could be made for TV drama from the 60s, but I think it's probably real. I think that they tried to use a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber, but quickly realized that it's impossible, at least in a high vacuum. So they immediately started their policy of only using swimming pools to train and completely ignoring and remaining silent on the absence of vacuum chamber training of astronauts. And check out the caption. It says, the video above shows the moments when Jim LeBlanc was subjected to a space-like vacuum, space-like, it's a medium vacuum, in a NASA testing chamber in 1965. Interestingly, although an accident, it's one of the only experiments into how a human would cope in such conditions, and thus our modern knowledge of the effects rely upon this incident. We're relying upon this one time they tried to put somebody in a vacuum chamber? Whew, it's pretty pathetic. As I stumbled backwards, I could feel the slime on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And originally I had a clip of the BBC video with Brian Cox where they dropped a feather and a bowling ball in a pathetic attempt to prove gravity and I had to take it out because that was the first thing that got this video blocked. And I'll put the link in the description, but it's a horrible spectacle showing how they waste massive amounts of our tax money as they prepare the gigantic space power facility and operate it just to film the propaganda feather and bowling ball drop. And they all react like it's the greatest thing they've ever seen, and I don't know about anyone else, but I'm sick and tired of working my butt off so these jokers can waste my money on ridiculous productions like this. I mean, this facility is enormous, and even just sitting there unused, it takes massive amounts of money to maintain. And even more so when all of the workers have to show up and operate it for the propaganda. Heck, every time you shut the giant door, it probably costs thousands of dollars. And again, we pay them to create propaganda for us. Not the best use of capital, in my opinion. And then the next clip is the one that just got this video removed, and this was the clip from Smarter Every Day. 
I, um, I guess he didn't like how ridiculous he and astronaut Donald Petit looked when they discussed the shutters on the cupola of the International Space Station. They basically talk about the tiny little O-rings that are used to create a seal for the seven handles that open and close the shutters. They operate the handles from inside the cupola and these handles close the shutters on the outside of the space station. So for me, the worst part was how ignorant Donald Petit was when asked what to do in the event of a leak in the seal. He's like, uh, then you have a leak. Probably seal off the cupola. There's probably a plan. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan to replace the mechanism. It might require a spacewalk, all nonchalantly. And it's like, what in the world is he thinking? This is horrible. If the ISS were real, there would be a procedure for every possible contingency. What's going on? Sanders, what's going on? It's Mega Mate. She's gone from suck to blow. On submarines, you train and practice emergency drills all the time. Even the lowest ranking member on a sub will know what to do in the event of an emergency. This is Donald Petit, an elite astronaut. The astronauts are supposed to be the best and brightest having to beat out hundreds of qualified people to become a NASA astronaut. I mean, are you kidding me? Where are the drills? What are the procedures? They would have a specific procedure for every type of incident. Loss of pressure, leaking seals, micrometeorite penetration, ammonia leak. I mean, come on, this is horrible. Where are the drills? The first thing they would show in videos would be them rehearsing drills. But instead, we get videos of spinning stuffed animals and making tacos, washing hair, blowing bubbles in space. I mean, really? Does anyone believe this stuff? If it were real, there would be nonstop, serious drills about how to stay alive in the event of an emergency. Then at the end, Mr. Smarter Every Day even exclaims, You have the vacuum of space being held back by two little bitty O-rings. That's incredible. Well, he's right there. It is incredible that people believe it. And shame on us for being ignorant for all of these years. But um, anyways, at least we know now and we can observe these things in greater detail with objectivity. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope you all have a nice day. Adios.